My name's Bruce Shillingsworth. I'm a Murrawari budgety man from the northwestern uh, New South Wales. I'm here today uh, for a special reason. We're going to have a conversation about some important stuff that, you know, not just happening here on, on our lands, but across the, the across the world. And I think there's a lot of lot of issues um, we need to, you know, start sitting down, uh, talking in dialogue, especially with a lot of the decision making uh, on this country of ours, this continent of Australia. But I would like to acknowledge the land in which I am yeah. here, that we, we sit, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I want to acknowledge my original brothers and sisters at uh, the 500 plus nations, the 250 plus language groups across this great continent of ours. I just want to acknowledge the elders both past, present and emerging for their old memories, the traditions and the hopes for First Nations original people of this country. And I'd also like to acknowledge my brothers and sisters that come from across the sea that now lives in Australia. I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. So beautiful. And you're speaking straight to the heart. And today we're here to get straight to the core of what is going on. There's so much confusion, as you said yesterday, and it's everywhere. How, where do we start? Where do we start with what's going on with this corona narrative, the land, mm -hmm. and the, the divide of the people? Look, I think we need to look at our survival, our survival as human beings on this one planet. And it's all about us living together and how we, how we uh, relate, you know, and how we live with our neighbours um, and how live with our people within our, in our traditional lands. And I think um, we look at the things that are making us suffer. I mean, First Nation people history, as you know, is, 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 is a very, very sad history. You know, and those truth telling needs to happen. Yeah. I believe in this country that First Nation people need to be healed, non-Indigenous people need to be healed, and by doing that, we need to come together and heal together. Yeah. We need to heal together. Look, I believe that there's a coming together now of all people right across this world. We are now standing up for our rights as sovereign people. You are standing up for the rights as being a person, and that's what's got to happen. And there's another fight as well. We've got to protect our Mother Earth. So we're going to become the protectors of Mother Earth that sustains us, First Nation people, for 80,000 plus years. Yep. So we want to reconnect back to Mother Earth and our country and the land in which we live. By doing that now in a modern way, I believe there needs to be a modern day corroboree of bringing together all races, tongues, tribes from all different places yep. to heal the world in which we live in today. So it's important for all of us as individuals to contribute. Yep. You will contribute, I will contribute to the changes of this world. I believe that we need to come out of the shadows of darkness and come forth into the light. Yeah. We've got to be that light. We've got to be that change. So you are the light, you are the change. That's what we want to tell our people. Let's get up there, let's stand up yeah. to the fraudulence and the greed and the corruption, the capitalism that's destroying our lives in this country and all over the world. It's time that we need to say enough's enough. Yes. Enough's enough. But we need to come together in solidarity. Yes. We need to stand up to the evil regimes that are now happening across the world. And we as ordinary people, I believe there's going to be a change because grassroots people, likes of you and I, are now standing up. Grassroots people are going to bring the changes. Our world leaders and our governments here are not going to bring any changes. They're not going to give us an answer. We have the answer. We live in our community. We know what our community wants. Let's make a decision for ourselves. Let not make them be de determine our future. Let's determine our own future because we have a right. We have a right to do that. So are we now in the phase where we need to bring out this truth you're talking about to prevent this history repeating? Or what you said to me, and this is the most beautiful thing that I've ever heard. My story is your story. What what is happening right now and what do we do about it? Look, let me tell you, look, I'm an, I'm an educator as well, I work in schools. Yep. Our schools are now multicultural. I believe our multicultural society, our kids are going to tell the true history of this country. Yep. I believe. Yep. Um, and they're going to bring a healing, bring a healing to this country and bring a healing to us. But if you look over the past, there hasn't been any truth telling. There hasn't been any recognition of sovereignty, First Nation, the original sovereignty to this country. There hasn't been recognised in our Australian law that we exist. Yes. So until that happens, things are not going to change. Our future lies in your future, right? Yes. 
The only way forward is to walk together. And like I said, my history goes back 80,000 plus years. Yeah. That history of 80,000 plus years is also your history. Yeah. Because you are now living in our country. Not to 250 plus, 230 plus years. Your history goes back further. And that's what we want to tell you and that's what we want you to learn. And like I said, the First Nation people are the pillars here in this, country, in this continent of Australia. So they hold the key because they have the wisdom, they have the knowledge yes. and they've lived on the land and they have a lot of answer to your climate change, to how we live with each other in this society and how we can create a better world. And I think that's where we need First Nation people to have a big contribution. Now across Australia there's a lot of rise of First Nation, act for, of original uh, people's uh, activists and voices are now coming forth. Yes. Now because that's where I believe that there's a movement and we are now guided by our elders and our ancestors. Yes. And like I said, the spirit is now moving across this land. And it's not only touching the hearts of, first, of, of the original people, but of uh, non-Indigenous people as well. I feel it, you feel it. There is a revolution. Whether we like it or not, it's not only happening here, but right across the world. We're a part of that. But we all need to contribute to the greater change. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well, by coming together. I mean, coming together like us. We need to be a collective. We need to be a collective in our decision making. Collective in our decisions to make a better future for our future decisions. And I think for so long we've been denied that. For those of so long, you know, the elites and whoever they are and governments that are stopping us from coming together and if we have to create that, they're getting scared and they're starting to run. Because they know there's people and there's, there's power in the people. There's power. there's power in the people. Power in the people that'll change our society and it'll change our world. So there's a multiple of people now coming together in solidarity to make that change. And I think uh, that's the best thing about it. It's people from all walks of life. We come together as a collective with our different, you know, different, uh, different opinions, our different, our different background, our different knowledge. We've come together with people because they've got different, you know, we've got to respect that. But we are the now, we are the now. So what we need to do now is then start asserting our our, uh, start asserting our voices and start asserting our authority. Yes. What's Australia? Do you believe that Australia is at the heart of this whole narrative, this whatever this corona narrative? What, what is what is all this happening right now? And are we at the heart of it here? Well, all the, all the confusion, the confusion that um, COVID has caused, and a lot of a lot of the. Um, you know, our governments and leaders and MPs and a lot of those are creating, causing uh, policies and laws and, and, and regulation that now affect us. So let's need to say, uh, say no, they don't represent us anymore. We represent ourselves. So we've got to get the right leaders or the right people into those positions to make the proper changes for us. And I think in the government position, we've got to get our representative, the people that represent us into those positions because we're, they are voted in by us, remember. Yeah. They've got to start listening to us. So that's what we're trying to tell them. Yeah. So I think, um, um, like I said, there's a gathering of people now. I think uh, because there's a common cause. I mean, back in the early 1960s, 70s, where, where First Nation people fought for, for land rights, yeah. our land rights were not just about the land. Yeah. It's about what's on the land. It's about our story. It's, it's about our connection. It's about our dreaming story. It's about the song line that connects us up to the, all the nations right across the country. It's not just about the rivers, not just about the mountain, it's not just about the trees. But it's all those, it's a, it's a holistic, it's a spiritual movement now. I think um, we are starting to assert our sovereignty, we are starting to assert our voices, and I think we need to do it because, you know, the world are now um, uh, uh, forming a, a, a one world government, and I think we need to say, you know, it's not what we want. It's a lot of these things, it has to be our consent to agree on a lot of things, and, and we've been denied that. Yeah. Um, so we need to start to stand and say, you know, with our consent, you cannot do these things. And that's what I think a lot of Australians, a lot of people are now starting to say. Our lives will not longer be affected by your laws and about your policies and about your, you know, your oppression that you put upon us. I'm not hearing a lot of this in mainstream information, what you're saying. And I'm not hearing a lot of the stories that I'm hearing at all these gatherings. Mm. I'm not seeing it. But I'm also not seeing How would you say the labels of the anti-vaxxer? I'm not. I'm not seeing the neo-Nazi. I'm not seeing white supremacy. I'm just. I'm not at the moment. 
have you... Well, I, well look, I think it's just... We it's genuine people that are now starting to stand up. It's genuine people, ordinary yeah. human beings, that are saying, now we've had enough. Yeah. You know, we've had enough because it's not just affecting First Nation or our original people, it affects the non-Indigenous people. So that's what they're trying to say. The world is heading in the wrong direction. Yeah. There's, we come to a fork in the road, there's only two roads left. One to death and destruction, the other's to life and survival. I know which road I'm going to take. So that's where we're at. We're at the crossroads. You know? We can either destroy our planet we live in, our Mother Earth which sustains us and we can't live without. We can't go and cut down our trees because our trees give us oxygen to survive. So we, at, the, at the end of the day, we're cutting our own throats. So we've got this kind of people wanting freedom, and people wanting freedom for Earth, freedom for everyone. Well, it's an holistic approach. It's everything. It has to do with everything now, you know, because we, you, 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 can't, you can't separate that. You can't separate it. You, as you see in, in climate change, you know, the, the climates have changed, extreme weathers. That's been created by, by man. So these polarizations of, I'm an activist in environmental change, I'm an activist in freedom change, that's just not really what's happening here. It's not, that's what's been represented in the media. But that's what we've got to tell the people. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, if we can't get freedom, unless we free our mother earth yeah. and we can't free ourselves. So you're, like I said, your freedom lies in my freedom. My freedom lies in your freedom. So the only way we do it is come together and if we ever change what we're in. So how do we get over these misrepresentations? Like you're telling me stories of, of why your mob or is there a dividing in your people in the, the anti-mandates and, and what we're here fighting look, I think, for? Look, I think, the problem is we want to bring everyone with us. Yep. Like I said, we're on a journey. We're on a journey and we're going to reach our destination. On that journey, we're going to go through our trials and tribulations. Yep. People, you know, some people will come on the journey, some won't. Yep. You know, and that's the way it is. But we could also, we could also support those that, are, that have been vaccinated and support those that are non-vaccinated. Yep. See, that's the unity that I'm talking about. Yep. We don't want to create more division. Yep. We don't want to create apartheid. And what our media system, especially mainstream media, is a propaganda and they're telling the people the wrong story. I'm very particular who I speak to and what media and where they're from. Yeah. Because I know once they get a story, they'll flip it and they'll make it look bad. Yeah. They don't tell the truth, you know. So little independent media, people like yourself, need to get the truth out there. Have you That's had what's experience got to happen. Yeah, I've experienced that all my life. I mean, you look at a lot of the stuff with the, you know, Aboriginal, especially Aboriginal, you know, our Aboriginal people with them um, in the media. It's all been uh, defamatory. It's all been, you know, poor, poor quality. It's all been uh, uh, discriminatory and racism. Yeah. You know, so now people are starting to see that. They're starting to realise that these stories are not right, and the facts need to be told. And what are not being, what's not being told about the COVID-19 in your communities and right now we're seeing, you know, the media's saying it's spreading and there's people resisting. What is this resistance? Well, th there's, a, there's a problem in a lot of, our, a lot of our, um, our communities is that a lot of our people have been resistant to that. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, they have a right to do that. Yeah. Um, because they said it's affecting their DNA, their genetics. Yeah. Um, they lived off the land for you know thousands of years, and they want to stay like that. Yeah. You know, they don't want any chemicals or poison put into their bodies. I mean, you look at our old people; they live through a very old age. Yeah. But they've been now. A lot of our people have been introduced to these, you know, vaccine, this, you know, jabs, all those sorts of stuff. Which is not foods. right. It's not right. Not. So the problem that I have in those communities is that, but they've been forced. Some have been forced onto our our, our mob. Yep. Um, through the through the police, um, the law enforcement, yep. it's been uh, forced on them by the uh, ADF, the Australian Defence Force. It also been backed. It's been backed by the Lands Council, Aboriginal Lands Council, and our Aboriginal Medical Service. So they are the government agencies that are pushing this and demanding these things on our people. So here you got agencies that Aboriginal organisation that are set up, but are now being dictated by the government. It's the government agenda. It's not ours. So those, those are the problems that we're going to fight against too in our community. How, there's two questions here. How are they being forced? And 
how do we have evidence of this? Like, well, I look. Yeah. I know for fact that I got lots of lots of fines that people send to me. Yeah. I get one of a lady. She's a pensioner that went to a shop to buy a bottle of milk, and she got fined five thousand dollars, and I've got evidence of that. So all these two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollar fines. How people? How are they going to pay it when they're on Centrelink and living in those conditions? So how far you know? are they walking? How are they? Well, they walk three or four kilometres, or they can just drive down, or 100 kilometres. You know, driving in to get food yeah. from those remote areas. You know, and they've been stopped. They're den denying truckloads of food to going into these communities. Just you know, and, and the police is going around knocking on people's door and say, "Come on, it's time to get the vax." So you know, health workers, walking? health workers are going out there and say, "You've got to get it, or you won't do this, and you can't do that." Are they forcing through coercion like what? Yes, coercion and they're also paying. They're paying. They're paying the people I mean, to be able to do it, you know, to get the jet. So you know, up in the Northern Territory, you get $500 to $700 cash to go and get the vax. And we know that because we got evidence of that. Are they doing it, what age groups? Oh, they're doing it from, from very small age, from 11 up, yeah. And they're doing it yeah, now to the smaller ones. So they don't tell you that on the news. And, and what, what's, what human rights is that? And they're dislocating our people. You know, they, they're moving them to separate areas. They're isolating them. And put them in, you know, accommodation where they shouldn't be. You know, a lot of these just people are having... Just to do with having, COVID? Yes, just to do with COVID. A lot just of them haven't COVID. even got COVID. Yeah. Hmm. So those are a lot of things that uh, we're having problems with. I mean, you can't... I mean, even with the, uh, with the legal part of it, and a lot of them don't want to, you know, get involved yep. um, because they're supported by the government and the rollouts as well. Um, so that's where a bit of a, that's where we stuck. Where now, is getting, this getting prevented, the storytelling, to get these, these incidents? That, why are they not getting out? Where should they be coming? In the media? What? Look, we've got evidence. We've been talking to media and everything, but all they do is just ignore us. They ignore They it. ignore us. Do they you give know? a reason? No, they don't. They just don't respond. So, how is other stories coming out in social media? Is there a new way of getting this information out? Well, I think a lot of the uh, social medias are pushing a lot of the stories, but also the independent media are doing it. I yep. mean, interviews like with you and I, you know, people are getting those messages out there. I think that's, that's where it's so important. And, we, and you know for a fact we can't rely on mainstream media. They're just, uh, you know, just there for themselves and for the government. Yep. All right, well, I feel there is definitely a whole new whole new information age coming out of this Yes, too. yes. I mean, a lot of, you know, that, that's what we're creating. I mean, social media, I mean, we've got the platform now to be able to get our stories out and tell that. Uh, so it's great. And I think um, by, you know, people like of us sitting down, talking about, you know, our issues in our community is a start. And I think that's where it needs to start. That's where it should have happened years ago. Uh, we also got to look at a lot of the problems with our constitution, yes. um, our Australian government, whether it's legal um, or illegal. Yes. Um, so those are the foundation that we also need to look at. Yep. I mean, whether they exist or whether they have the authority uh, to be able to do these sorts of things, to make laws, to make policy, to make all those directions for our mob. And I think that's where us as a nation need to start questioning it. Um, and need to start to know the truth. And are you feeling more support coming this way? Well, definitely, definitely. There's support not just here, yeah. but right across the world. I, I'm feeling it too. I actually get a lot of yep. a lot of people writing. So where do we go from here with the healing, um, bringing the spirit of the land, the spirit of this story, the spirit of uniting? Yeah, but like I said, it has to be a gathering. We've got to come together more often. Yep. I think once we come together more often, then we can be able to then start challenging the government or challenging those that are oppressing us. We don't want to be slaves. Yeah. We're not slaves and we're not going to be treated like slaves. Yes. Right? <laughs> so that's what we've got to do. Uh, we've got to say no more, enough's enough. But if we don't stand up now, we will, we will lose another seven generations. And we will lose our planet. We'll lose Mother Earth. We'll lose everything. But I think there's a people, there's a coming together, and I feel it and you feel it, of wants to make that change. You want to live together in a world that is a much peaceful and much safer environment. What's this fight going to be like for people? 
that are new to it? Well, look, I think it's the first, uh, it's not the first, but it's the beginning of a new era. Yeah. It's the beginning of bringing in the proper government. It's bringing of a new era to bringing in the proper leadership. It's bringing in those changes that we've spoke about it for many years. It's about the truth telling. It's about, like I said, bringing in those truth telling, making people accountable, and just, 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 uh, um, just coming together, yeah. I think, as a collective. Um, sharing our, you know, even though we come from different backgrounds, uh, we need to embrace that, we need to respect that, and I think that's what needs to happen. How, how do we move with, with people that have had prejudices and all those things in the past and that have, have been ignorant to what's happened to your people? How do we all, do we apologise? What, what's the way forward? Look, like I said, we are the now. Yeah. We got to make the change now. Um, but look, there's going to be people that'll come with us. There's just people that are not going to support us. Yeah. I'm, my belief is we cannot leave anyone behind. Yeah. Even if we've got to pick them up and carry them with us. That's what we've got to do. Even if they support us, even if they don't, we've still got to carry them and bring them on the journey with us. Because those you know, um, people that don't support us will wither away and they'll disappear. You know? That's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's love, isn't it? That's right. I think that's the only way forward. This hates this hate. Yeah, the hate's gotta stop. It's gotta stop. You know, we just like I said, we've got to do it for our little ones. We've got to show them that we love each other and why we show it is by coming together and sitting and you know, having a cup of tea or having a feast or having a you know when our kids see us doing that it changes their mind up here, yeah. you know. They think differently. For, but for so long, we haven't been doing those things, see. We haven't, we so haven't. It's connecting the heart. Well, we're connecting the heart, the mind, the soul, everything. The body, we've got to connect. And that's what we were, that's what we were created for. Because we've got to remember that we all come from a common ancestry. Yeah. You know. So look what's dividing us. Look what's creating everything amongst us. That's what we've got to stand up and fight. We do, and, and the little ones, the First Nations, the little ones, there's some great injustices yeah. happening right now That's today. right. Just tell me, what are they, and how this will affect everyone? There is no justice until we deal with the injustices. Yeah. Right? So if you go out and see injustices happening, you need to say, stop. That's what we're telling non-Indigenous people to say, look, it is not right to treat anyone like that anyone from any race or any background that's what we've got to be bold enough to stand up and say, to say no more come on they are humans just like us and we need to be all be treated equally exactly. and with love hmm? and what about the children in, in the care at the moment and in the, in the look there's more about more about children now have been taken away so we talk about the stolen generation Look what's happening now. Yeah. More and more of our kids are still being taken away. More and more of our kids and our, you know, our adults have been incarcerated in jails. We've got the highest percent of any world of our people that's here in jail. When is that going to stop? Yeah. When are we starting to realise the racism and the discrimination in our law system, yeah. in our judicial system? You know? It's deep. So what I do, I give them a voice. A voice for those that have been voiceless for so many years, yeah. and you also, and my non, you know, bro uh, First Nation brothers and sisters have got to say, "Come on, it is our world. It is about our children. It is about us." Why I say us? Why do I say we? You see, we're bringing together a greater circle in our traditions. Society, we, we do things in circles. Yes. So we've got to do the opposite. Your government system is set up as an hierarchy of steps. Yep. It's not including everyone. Yep. Whereas in our society, we sit in a circle, we include everyone, everyone has a voice, everyone sit in equality, everyone has a voice and opinion. Yes. But this government and the world system is not allowing us to do that. So, there's so much for all of us to take in. 
we need to open our hearts. Mm -hmm. How can we leave this conversation? Look, the work doesn't stop. I believe that you are in a community. Yep. Um, look, there are uh, First, uh, First Nation people that are living in your community. Yep. Um, get out there, build a relationship, go up and say hello, you yep. know, try to help them in whatever they want to do, organise you know, their causes. And that's where it starts. You know, and that's where you start bringing it together then. You know, you're bringing grassroots, you're bringing the traditional people together. And that's what I think what needs to happen. And I think for so long, a lot of us have been scared of doing that. Yeah. You know, are scared to talk to an Aboriginal person, scared to talk to a white person. But come on, now it's time. It is time. It has to happen now. Do you think this, what's happening today, this Freedom Rally, do you think this will bring a lot of the conversation between Absolutely, together, absolutely, together? absolutely. And what are we all feeling? What are the main reasons we're all here today? Well, I think, while well, we're here because we're fighting a system that's suppressing us. Yeah. We're fighting a system for so long as denying our rights yeah. as men and women, right? And they're also denying our future generation. Yeah. So that's what we've got to start to stand up and fight against. So we've got to change the system we're in. We've got to look at the institute, uh, all those things that uh, are a part of that. Yeah. Part of that. So we need to bring change to that to get the freedom. And I think people are standing up now are saying that it'll be part of bringing that change it'll make it happen do you think this we're hearing all the violence in the media at these protests and everything what are your feelings are people doing making this change peacefully will it have to get look you're going to have you're going to have violent you know most of the time but i think with the violence they send a message. Yeah. They're sending a message to I mean, say that we are standing up, we are state. fighting, and we want to be charged for doing the right thing. You know? That's the message they want to get out there. But a lot of them are not violent. I believe that a lot of the, uh, the police, um, yeah. they int introduce a lot of that stuff. I mean, they, you know, they, they create a lot of the fear. They create a lot of you know, violence against our, you know, our protesters. And I think it's, it's our, our police, police force uh, need to start working with community and they need to start working uh, with the people. Yes. And I think they're here to serve us. But you've also got to remember that our police force is in a registered corporation in America. What jurisdiction do they have on our lands? Those are the things that we've got to question. Yeah. They're not here to represent us, for us. They're here to support the corporates, the big companies, the government. So tell me more, they're registered. Yep, even your Australian Parliament. What with the United in, States? Yes. Can you just give me a little bit more on that, just some hard evidence of that? In 1973, Gough Whitlam, Queen Elizabeth left Australia, right? And then they formed the government and they've incorporated the, 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 the Queen of Australia. So the Queen of Australia doesn't exist. It's a straw man. Right? Yeah. All your political parties are in incorporated bodies. And when you say this, People brush it off as conspiracy theorists, theories a lot of these things. I have not heard, I've been in the media for 23 years, and I'm telling you, I was a mainstream journalist. Good. I did not hear of conspiracy theorists really until th the amount that it's in the news now. I feel like anyone who questions or just wants to show that there is some truth here, gets labelled this conspiracy theory. So this, what you're saying now, I feel maybe 20 years ago, if you said it to me in a story, mm. it wouldn't have been so controversial. Well, people need to go and research their facts. Go and research the facts. Look at 1973, what happened with Gough, Gough Whitlam? You know, it's all, there's a fraudulent system that is happening here. There are fraudulent legal systems that are happening on our land that we are part of. 
So we got to now start to deal with that. Yep. That's the bigger picture it's that we need to start dealing with. It's not just us here coming together a thing. Like I said, it's that system out there, you know. Wow, so there's a lot of um, truth that needs to be revealed. That's right. And it cannot be done in one 30-minute nope. interview. It nope. can't be done in a thousand words. Nope. It can't be done in a little news grab or no, it's can't. in a tweet. And that's why I said it'll take over time. Yeah. This is only a part of what's going to happen. Over the next 10 or 20 years, then you will start challenging you know, the issues. And that's what we need to do as a collective. And we stand as a number of people, a large number, yep. to be able to tackle those issues. Well, I feel today we've, we've just probably at the tip of the iceberg. Only the iceberg. And today we've talked about really this corona narrative and how it's affecting your people and what, what it's bringing out. Yeah, but look, our, the corona and the rollout of the, uh, the laws and regulation affected our people big time because there, there was a... All, there was always those underlying, underlying issues that were in our communities at the beginning. Yes. Housing, health, education, all those things that you say. And then when COVID came along, what happened? They give the police extra powers, you know? And when you give the police force extra powers, what do they do? Yeah. So that's what we're trying to say. But they don't tell us these stories on mainstream media, you know? We're going to do our best to get Good, get out there and out. talk to some of the people in those communities. Please. I will, and mm. I will. It's very hard with journalism. You do need, you do need hard facts. Yeah, but like journalism that. also needs to change. Yes. You know. I think it's. Really it needs to change. Journalism. It's a new journalism. You know, uh, we're not, we're not going to be dictated at all how to do it anymore. Yeah. You know, it's you want to do this story, so you do it your way, and you get the facts, you get the truth. Yeah. And that's what we want you to do, and not to put into some stories in a different way. Yeah. But that's you know, the journalism that we want. There's so much. I, mm. I look forward to mm. constantly bumping into you and getting more of, of your knowledge. Good. I've got to go and grab All a right. cup before I start. So I've got some fruit. Good. All right. Thank you so much. I might grab a fruit. Have you got a fruit? Got yeah, grab a bit. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Not very good. Thanks, mate. It's very natural.